so the, the next thing I want to warn the listeners about, and I realize I'm going to step on a few people's toes, but please listen, hear me out on this, people, because it's important for you to hear, okay? Um, very important. I call it destruction by dialectic. And the, they are taking the awake community and they are destroying it with the dialectic. And as you hear me, you'll start understanding what I'm talking about. So see, they have these scripts, and this all goes back to what I was saying at the beginning. This is all just a play. It's just a stage. And they're doing this big play. I mean, it's real people, except when it's, it's, it's a double or a robotory or something or a clone. But, you know, I mean, you, you could say that the play's for real. You know, it's, it's not just in a theater. Um, so they took the script that they used to create Hitler and they used it to create Putin. And I sat there and watched them do this, right? So, so check this out, people. You had pan-Germanism. Pan-Germanism means, you know, we're going to make Germany this great nation, you know. And then Germany fights World War I and they lose it. So at the end of World War I, they have what's called the diktat where they strip Germany of all their colonies, and they had quite a few, and they, they took a lot of, they took like 12 territories of Germany proper and gave pieces of Germany to different countries. Like they gave part of, part of Germany to Denmark, they gave parts of Germany to France, they gave a little part to Belgium, you know, and then they, they made some of these parts that they took away from German, Germany proper, they made them independent, like Danzig and Memel. So, so then, after they they strip Germany of all of these parts and colonies, then they bring in this crazy inflation that brings in starvation, and then out of that you get this strong man, Adolf Hitler. And he comes along with his mind comp, and then the next thing you know, you got this war going on because he's trying to implement his mind comp, right? Well, the very same script. I mean, they might have, when they dusted it off, tweaked it a little bit, but but it's it's so close, it, it it's it, it's just basically the same thing. So you got this pan-Russian, this ultra-nationalistic idea of you know, Russia is the greatest nation in the world. And that was long before Putin. And then Russia loses the Cold War, and then they're stripped. The uh, Eastern Europe was basically colonies of Russia. So they strip all those colonies from Russia. And then they strip territories of Russia. A whole bunch of territories became independent, like the Ukraine became an independent country. And then the IMF... And the IMF people, that's Illuminati. The people that run the IMF are Illuminati members. I know that as a fact. And the IMF, they, they put Yeltsin into power, and then they told Yeltsin, you need to do shock therapy for the Russian economy. So after Yeltsin uh, uh, comes into power, he does the shock therapy, which sends Russia into inflation. So like a candy bar that costs like the equivalent, uh, of course they use ruples in Russia, but let's say we were tr translating that into to dollars. A candy bar at the beginning cost a dollar, okay? But by the time the inflation had taken its effect, it's like $2,000. So it's just crazy. You had old elderly people that were starving to death. You know, and, and I talked to Illuminati kin, kingpins. They thought it was funny. They, they said they wanted to get rid of those people. So whatever. Um, so then out of that whole mess, you get this strong man, Putin, who's, who's, who's like a Hitler image, you know? And then he's got his, he's got his own mind comp, which a lot of people haven't heard about. And this really should have, been talked about a lot more in mainstream media. There's this book, it's The Third Empire, 
Russia as it ought to be. Oh, backtracking. Um, what did Hitler call his Germany to start with? The Third the Reich. Third Reich. What's Reich <laughs> mean? The Third Empire. So Hitler had his Third Empire. Now Putin's got his Third Empire. I mean, you can't make this stuff up, you know? It, it, <laughs> Um, so, you know, in this, the third empire, Russia, as it ought to be book, it says they should attack Georgia. Well, they do in 2008. You know, they should annex Crimea. They do that in 2014. And then it's just, they're just following the, uh, this, this Russian mind cup, just using it. And this book in the Kremlin is highly valued. Well, I don't know why it's not talked about more, because a lot of people are thinking, oh, you know, uh, Putin's just trying to get rid of neo-Nazis in Ukraine or something. No, he's got an agenda just like Hitler did. But the thing of it is, is who is Putin? You know, this is where I am seeing a lot, I am seeing a lot of awake people, a lot of Christians that are a lot of awake, and a lot of other awake people, they love Putin, and they think that he's fighting the New World Order. Well, people, who was Putin before he became a public figure? He was friends with Klaus Schwab long before he became a public figure. Uh, Klaus Schwab's an Illuminati member. Putin's a member of an Illuminati bull lodge. And um, a lot of other people that that are significant are also members of these early logics. Thirty-six of them worldwide. So, I, I got a quick yeah, question yeah. about Putin. You're right. Yeah. A lot of people thought Putin was fighting the NWO. A lot of people thought the same about Donald Trump versus the deep state. Is he part of these bloodlines like Putin? Uh, Donald Trump is a front man for a faction of the elite. Now this faction is not is not following the Illuminati agenda. I mean, they do some things and don't do others. So, I mean, in terms of if you don't want to follow the Illuminati agenda, yeah, talk straight that way. But don't think that he doesn't have connections in with the whole thing. Um, yeah, he's got connections. He was put into power by this faction. And um, so, you know, I would rather have Trump than, than Biden, but uh, people have to understand that this is all just a large script. And um, I, I'm sorry to break people's bubble, but, but Trump is not Lily White. You know, he's, yep. he's involved with some... Um, Shady things, let's put it that way. And um, that that's what I'm trying to get about Putin, you know. Putin was friends long ago, long before he became a public figure of, of Kissinger. He was in Kissinger's home. And then he was a protege of Klaus Schwab, who's an Illuminati member too. So it's Kissinger, you know. And Putin has been all along endorsing Klaus Schwab's World Economic Forum, and the people around him, like uh, his right-hand man, Dmitry Medvedev, I actually said it, um, you know, these people, they have been going before the World Economic Forum and addressing it repeatedly. They've been, been right there at the forefront of things at the World Economic Forum until February um 2022, when they attacked Ukraine, and then the uh, World Economic Forum said, uh, "You're going to have to quit coming," you know. But Putin's oligarchs—they help finance the World Economic Forum, and about a dozen of them each year would attend the Davos meetings. You know, uh, Moscow had a World Economic Sit uh, Forum Center that was trying to promote the fourth industrial revolution. Um, uh, Putin's former chief of staff, Sergei Ivanov, he, he was 
uh, a member of World Economic Forum. So wh what does it mean to be a member of World Economic Forum? Well, they charge you, and it, this is by invitation, but if, if you want to join, you pay $52,000 to become a member. And then if you want to attend these Davos meetings, which is done by invitation by also, a ticket to, to enter into the meeting is 19000 So these people are putting their money where their mouth is, you know. I mean, this is, it, it, certainly I wouldn't become, there's no way I would ever become a um, World Economic Forum member. Um, yeah, so, so Putin is not the saint. I mean, I, I can't believe what people are saying about him. Like these, he's this Christian saint that's fighting the New World Order. Do people realize what Hitler said he was doing? Hitler said that he was fighting the banksters, that he was fighting the Jewish Masonic conspiracy. You know, he was against this world conspiracy, supposedly. Um, and the Japanese that, that sided with Hitler, although this is not publicized in, in history very much, if any, uh, the Japanese were constantly saying, we're fighting the Jewish Masonic conspiracy. So, you know, just like, just like Putin supposedly is fighting the world order while he's totally connected with it, um, supposedly Hitler was fighting. But if you look at who financed Hitler, people like the Bush family and uh, Wall Street and uh, some of the British aristocracy helped Hitler, um, the king of England at, at one point. I mean, yeah, like um, Hitler wasn't just grassroots people. He had some, some heavy-duty financing. One of the families that financed him was the Krupp family, and the Krupp family is written about in my Bloodlines of the Illuminati uh, book. So you got this Putin, and people, he's ruling by plunder. Well, he's got a kleptocracy. All of his buddies, these, these oligarchs, they're just plundering Russia. It, it's totally amazing. Um, I can't see how, how people can't see that he's not a good guy. They're just, they're, the poor Russian people, they're just being plundered. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. And then he could care less of how many, you know, if he loses 200,000 Russians in Ukraine, he'll just draft another 200,000. Uh, you know, um, uh, so the, the toughness of the Russian people is incredible. You know, and, and so... I got the statistics so that I could try to explain to people that this war over in Ukraine is going to go on a long time because the USSR in 1941 had 195.4 million people and then they lost 27 million in World War II, right? Okay. So, the Ukraine is not quite as big today as the USSR was, but they're still pretty large. Um, Russia today, um, ha in 2022, uh, 145.8 million. Okay, so what if they lost over there in Ukraine? They lost maybe 150,000, 200,000. That's that's a drop in the bucket compared to 27 million people. The Russian people can, can endure a lot. And so this, this war is not going to, um, th this war is going to continue. I mean, Russian people are going to, to take a lot of, uh, a, a lot of suffering and abuse. Um, and the oligarchs don't care because they've been plundering the Russian people a long time. They could care less about them. They've got these 
incredibly expensive yachts, incredibly expensive mansions everywhere. Well, what do you need a yacht for? I, I mean, I asked the the audience and, and and Brother Sanchez, what do you need a uh, half million dollar yacht or or a uh, fifty million dollar yacht? What do you need that? I can't well, even gonna, begin to imagine. I, I'm going to throw out one possibility here. If you want to bugger little boys or maybe bugger little girls, you take these little children that are expendable, you take them out into international waters, and when you get done sexually abusing them, you, you kill them and toss them into the ocean. Uh, case closed. Um, that's what a lot of these elite do with their young. And um, anyway, you had, you had the, the um, Scientology guy, Al Ron Hubbard. Was it was it him or, or someone that had the boat and was trying to hide off the coast to avoid uh, persecution? Wasn't something like that? Um, I didn't know about Hubbard, but I'm not surprised. But Scientology has a ship that goes that goes out there and. And a lot of abuse happens to the Scientologists that are on the boat. Um, yeah, that's that, okay. Thanks for sharing that. Um, yeah, I heard he was hiding off off the coast for a while. In the beginning. yeah. So I was going to take a look at a couple a um, uh, couple of these oligarchs, um, just to to let people realize what his friends are like, you know. So you got this Russian citizen, but it's also an Israeli citizen, real citizen, Mikhail Friedman. He's, he's Jewish. He's an oligarch. He's a billionaire. He's a philanthropist. Are you getting the picture, people, here? And he co-founded the Russian Jewish Congress. Well, guess what? He's a member of RCFR, Council of Foreign Relations. Um, you get, you get the picture, you know, um, then a friend of Putin, who is another oligarch, Vladimir Zirinovsky, he was openly Nazi and his political party, which was, had unified from one of the polit uh, political parties that unified with his, they openly flew the Third Reich flag as their banner. I mean, how Nazi can you get, right? And this this Zirinovsky, he right out in the open would publicly say that if he was in charge of things, he would capture, he would take Finland, and he would take over Alaska, right? Well, he died just after the invasion in April 2022. Because he was a friend of Putin, Putin went to his Putin went to his funeral. This guy was openly a Nazi. Now the point I'm making is is and there are all kinds of Nazis in Russia. And there are all kinds of Nazi political parties in Russia. If Putin wanted to clean out Nazis, he could start with Russia. He wouldn't have to invade Ukraine. He could start with Russia if he was trying to, to clear out Nazis. Because you go to Russia and you'll see a lot of people with, with swastika tattoos and stuff. You know, um, In fact, David Duke, some of you probably know who David Duke is, he's a grand wizard of the KKK. He's a very prominent American Nazi. And he was in federal prison. Well, he, he, he was released in May 2004. Anyway, back in the 90s, back in 1994, well, no, yeah, no, excuse me, back in 1999, before he, was, he went to prison, he was in Moscow for five years. Why was David Duke in Moscow for five years? Because he was buddy buddies with the Russian Nazis, okay? Now, Putin's saying, oh, there's these Nazis in Ukraine. 
the Azov Battalion, yeah, the Azov Battalion is definitely a Nazi unit. And there's a whole history of how they were formed. Who created, who funded this Ukrainian Nazi battalion, Azov Battalion? I think his name was Igor Kolomoysky. Okay, who's Igor Kolomoysky? He was a Israeli Jewish billionaire, also a philanthropist. Are you getting the picture, people? Now, why is a Jew creating a Nazi battalion in Ukraine? You tell me that. I mean, you scratch below the surface and things don't add up, people. Come on. This is, this is all, we're, we're getting a controlled conflict here that's been manufactured. Do you see that? Are you beginning to get the picture that this is all staged? It's all a play? And then when all of these awake people go, well, uh, whoever's my, whoever's the enemy of my enemy must be my friend. So Putin must be my friend because he's against Biden. Oh, come on, people. You're getting sucked into the dialectic. The, the Russia is the enemy of the United States. <coughs> Most Americans back to Ukraine, and so all of these uh, awake people are setting themselves up for destruction by by supporting Putin. No, don't get caught up in the dialectic. This is all stage managed dialectic, people. Um, and and yeah, it's it's sad that United States is is sending billions of dollars over there to this war. I mean, you know. It, the whole war is sad. The whole war is a tragedy. But don't get sucked in. Don't get sucked into the dialectic, people. Um, I hope that makes sense. Uh, I, I'm just scratching the surface. There's a lot more that could be said, you know. Um, let's see. I, I got to look at the clock and see. Okay, I, I, I've I gone through. Actually, it's been going... Uh, Okay, so I got about 30 more minutes. Is that right? Yeah, you've been going hard. You've been doing, you've been doing real good, Fritz. Oh, yeah, this is, this is powerful, and we appreciate you, Fritz. Oh, thank you. That's so kind. Well, I'm glad somebody appreciates me. <laughs> the New World Order doesn't. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, hey. So let me put a little context to all of this. There was an Illuminati kingpin, Jock Atali, and he said, and I'm quoting, people only evolve when they're in fear, right? So they're just trying to scare us out of our wits. You know, look at what the, the world order, look at what the mainstream media is peddling. Look at what fears they're trying to peddle. You know, and going back to this Ukrainian war, they're trying to peddle oh, we're going to have this nuclear holocaust, you know. Well, people, I really think that that's all, that's all just to scare us out of our wits, right? Okay? Um, there's not going to be a global nuclear war where everything is just melted in one nuclear holocaust. Um, they're just scaring us out of our wits so that they can move us in the direction that they want us to move in. And they're using, they're using fear for a lot of things. And um, on a number of these shows, I have, I have talked about how in Chinese, the Chinese word for crisis is made up of two characters. One is dangerous and the other one is opportunity. In other words, adversity and hard times teach us especially God's servants, the deeper things of God, and they're, they're, they present unique opportunity. 